Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and I have a bit of a weird video for you today. Uh, the Forbidden List just updated. Yeah. I know it's it's kind of strange given that it updated a couple of weeks ago. I'm not complaining. Usually the Forbidden List affords me about a week of free content, which I can spend practicing my pog face. Watch how good I got at it last cycle. I mean, come on. Now, that's why I was so weirded out to see that it had updated today, and that every card on this list is terrible. I mean, they're really bad. So I thought I would take this opportunity to give you a little bit of insight into why these cards are being hit, which ones are going to be relevant, and which ones aren't, and what it means for the future of remote dual play. So firstly, why were these cards hit? Uh, the answer to this one is pretty simple. These were not hit for the entirety of organized play. They were hit for remote duels only. Most of these cards present a very specific issue, which is, if you're playing video duels, you can't resolve their effects. As you all know, remote duels are Konami's answer to a lack of an online client. They functionally sanctioned Skype duels, which is a fine way to enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh, and I certainly appreciate there is a way to do it, but insubstantial in some very specific ways. One of those is you can't activate any effects which manipulate your opponent's deck without their knowledge. They've figured out workarounds for stuff like Kaijus and Mind Control, but they can't get one for this, and as a result, every one of these cards either does something close to that or presents a very funny issue uh, with resolution, like transmission gear. Uh, functionally, fate sealing, which is not an official term, so don't at me, distant coder, um, or manipulating the top of your opponent's deck is something that your opponent can easily look at. Let's say you activate the effect of Spiral Gear Drone. You say, I want the top three cards of your deck in this order. Your opponent isn't supposed to have knowledge of what they'll be drawing, but if they just look at the screen, they'll see what you're doing. It's a type of cheating that's almost impossible to enforce, and as a result, they thought it was better just to throw these cards to the wayside. The collateral damage is so low because none of these really see any play in any metagame relevant lists, so they threw them all into the dumpster. That said, there are some of them that actually will impact certain decks. Uh, many of them, like Blizzard Warrior, weren't seeing play in any capacity, but some of them, like Goddess Skull's Oracle, did have niche applications. First, let's talk about the substantial changes. Destiny Hero Dominance is a monster that can be made with three Destiny Hero monsters, and its offending effect is that during the main phase you can look at the top five cards of either your deck or your opponent's deck, then place them on top of the deck in any order. It's got additional effects as well. This card is popular because it's a fantastic target for Fusion Destiny, a Destiny Hero Fusion specific card that allows you to send materials from your deck to the graveyard. Functionally, this card turns that card into three Foolish Burials, which is very good. That said, it won't be that impactful because at the end of the day, it's the third best Fusion Destiny target. Destiny Hero Dangerous has one Dark Monster as material, meaning it's a much more meaningful Foolish, and Destiny Hero Dystopia allows you to burn your opponents, beating them in time, or interact with them on their turn. Usually one of those two is the target that you're using, and often Dominance doesn't even make it into Hero Extra Decks. Next up is Flower Cardian Peony with Butterfly, and explaining this one is a little bit difficult. Flower Cardian is a synchro combo deck. It is very, very hard to play. I don't think anyone really understands if this deck is good or not, just because piloting it is an exercise in futility. So much is left up to chance, and so much requires the pilot to know what they're doing at every stage of the combo. And as of yet, there's only one or two people who have capably done this deck. I would say that Flower Cardian Peony with Butterfly is a non-insubstantial portion of that deck. It is very, very required because it is a tuner. As I said, this is a synchro combo deck and they only have two tuners, one of which has a very difficult to achieve summoning condition, that is Willow with Calligrapher, and this one. Without this, their combos become much harder. So much harder that realistically, I don't think it's possible to play the deck until this comes back. Notably, the offending uh, effect on this one is that if it's special summoned, you can draw a card, and if it's a flower cardian, look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck, then place them all at the top or bottom in any order. That's a mandatory effect, but you could still cheat it out even if you weren't able to activate it. 
Spiral Gear Drone is going to have some applications as well. Drone, you may remember, as an actually strong card from the several formats in which Spiral was either dominant or on the fringes of the metagame. Unfortunately, this is the best way turn one to ensure you know the top of your opponent's deck. Drone allows you to manipulate the top three cards when it's normal or special summoned, which turns on additional Spiral cards like Spiral Super Agent. Eventually, you'll be link summoning a copy of Spiral Helix and using its effect, calling the top of your opponent's deck, and if you get it right, summoning a Spiral from your deck as well. Spiral isn't a particularly capable deck ever since they banned Master Plan, but some people do still play it and enjoy it, so it's unfortunate that it is going to be rendered unplayable because this card is now banned in Remote Duels. Now, there are still some ways to maybe make it work. If you blind second, you can normal summon Tough and do a similar thing, but this is the only way first turn that you can realistically ensure that you know what's on top. Finally, Goddess Skulls Oracle is technically a Valkyrie card, part of a cycle of three Goddess cards that allow you to perform the unbeatable combo of banishing the top card of your opponent's deck every turn. Goddess Skulls Oracle is better than the other two members of its cycle, however, because it's found a home in Mystic Mine Burn. Mine Burn, the Jeff Leonard special, is arguably the sixth or seventh best deck in the format that's only not being played because it is so mind-numbingly dull. <sighs> This card is critical to your setups because it ensures your opponent is never able to draw an Asaki one-ofs like Cosmic Cyclone, Imperial Order, or Twin Twister that would otherwise completely wreck your board state. You absolutely must be playing this card, and unfortunately, until this is unbanned, we are probably not going to be able to play it at any capacity. Now, there's a lot of these that don't have any metagame impact, and here they are. The first is Diabolos, King of the Abyss. Now, you may have seen Diabolos and gone, oh my god, my lair deck, don't worry. The card you're thinking of is a retrain of this one. This card can't be special summoned. If you tribute him, they have to be dark, already off to a good start, and can't be tributed by card effects while face up on the field. Once per turn during your opponent's draw phase, before their normal draw, you can look at the top card of their deck and put it on either the top or the bottom. Dark Scorpion Chick the Yellow is the only card on this list that's ever been on the actual Forbidden and Limited list. This is their second stint on it, after being semi-limited in GOAT format because of a combo with Mikura the Destructor and Call of the Haunted. When this card inflicts battle damage to the opponent, you can activate one of these effects, target one card on the field, return that target to the hand, that's the one responsible for the loop that you can see in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, or look at the top card of their deck and return it to the top or the bottom. Blizzard Warrior puts uh, looks at the top card of your opponent's deck and puts it on the top or the bottom whenever it destroys a monster by battle. Parasite Parasite, I'll just be real with you, is a card that already should have been banned. It's one of those pole position tier cards where if you bring it to a regional, a judge is legally allowed to beat you to death. It flips and then is put face up in your opponent's deck and then shuffled. When your opponent draws it, it's special summoned to their side of the field. They take a thousand damage and then all monsters they control are insects. It has pretty, pretty shallow applications. Senri Eye is a continuous spell that allows you to pay a thousand life points during each of your standby phases to look at the top card of your opponent's deck. You retain knowledge of what that card is, your opponent doesn't. Contract with the Aquamere is a card that, in an otherwise really competent archetype, sucks. If you control a face-up water monster, you get one of these effects, and if you got a water ritual, you get them both. You can look at all the cards your opponent has set in their spell and trap card zone, and you can look at the top two cards of either player's deck and return them to the top in any order. Ancient Telescope is a card that makes its way onto a lot of meme videos because it allows you to see the top five cards of your opponent's deck and do nothing about it. Spell Vanishing is a weird one. This card allows you to discard two cards from your hand, negate the activation of a spell card and destroy it, then look at your opponent's hand and deck, and if you find any spell cards of the same name as that destroyed spell card, send all of them to the graveyard. This strikes me as exactly the same as Nobleman of Crossout or Chain Disappearance. I don't know why this made it on and the others don't. Let me know in the comments. And finally, Transmission Gear, the funniest card on the list. During damage calculation, if your monster battles an opponent's monster, play Rock, Paper, Scissors. I mean, it's just too much. This already uh, was responsible for a lot of problems in Paper Yu-Gi-Oh!, but when there's delay, it gets much worse. We'll just... Uh, yeah, that's what I threw. Anyway, in terms of what this means for Remote Duels, I think it really exposes a giant problem with the concept. Remote Duels are fine as a stopgap measure while COVID... I don't know, rampages across the 
uh, parasitic nation of America, uh, but in the long term, it's not sustainable. Uh, realistically, this is a very conservative list of cards. It's what? Uh, 13 cards with no metagame application with the possible exception of Goddess Skull's Oracle, but as we saw just by reading them aloud, a more creative R&D could expand this list to probably about two or three hundred cards total that are all but impossible to resolve over Skype, and a lot of those do have metagame impact. So realistically, remote duels are fine for now, but in the future a more permanent solution, like getting an online client, has to be in the works. I'll note that Konami is currently developing something called Master Duel, which I hope will put an end to stopgap measures like this, and most notably in the announcement Konami said that these cards are only banned for remote duels, so either they have more faith in the success of the vaccine than I do, uh, not because I deny science, because I'm realistic about what Americans think, uh, or they have a supplementary type of Yu-Gi-Oh uh, play in mind, uh, something like a dueling book OTS, uh, maybe. Uh, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you Flower Cardian duelists will get over this, and I will see you in the next one.